For the first time, the gender pay gap at more than 5,000 Australian companies has been revealed. The Minister for Women, Katie Gallagher, argues this is about transparency and accountability, but is it really measuring like for like? Trudy McIntosh will take us through the figures now. Mm. Trudy, yeah, I mean, the headline figure, 19% gender pay gap, is pretty shocking. But when you dig a little deeper, it's not entirely accurate, is it? Well, Laura, let's be clear what this data is. It is not, in fact, a measure of whether a man and a woman at the exact same company doing the same job are getting the same pay. Now, if to pay them differently is, in fact, illegal, and it's been illegal for decades, that's not to say that doesn't happen, but that's not what this data captures. This is rather a more broad look at inside a company whether female-dominated roles are paid uh, less than that of males in the same company. It's broad data. The first time we've seen this published, more than 5,000 companies, as you say, and they have to have more than 100 employees in order to report this data. I wanted to show you, uh, of the 5,000 companies, a snapshot of who's earning uh, more and where the big gender pay gaps are. This is the list. Uh, some of them I've picked out here. The top one there, Hunter Primary Care, has the biggest pay gap of those reporting. You can see other companies like Jetstar, for example. Uh, the aviation companies have big gender pay gaps. Now, that's often because the bulk of their staff work as flight attendants that are women, and those in senior executives tend to be men. You can see the numbers there for the Commonwealth Bank and also AGL. I do want to show you the flip side of this story. There are companies in Australia that pay women and have a big gender pay gap from women to men. You can see the list here of some that I've pulled out. Uh, the, ma the majority of these companies tend to be NDIS service providers. You can see the top two there, that's an example of that. And private schools also have a quite a big gender pay gap in favour of women too. You can see Knox Grammar School listed there. Uh, these figures, as I say, not comparing like for like, but trying to show where women may be disadvantaged by comparison to their male counterparts. There is a lot of exclusions in this data, I'd like to point out. At the moment, CEOs uh, and line managers aren't included in this, but I'm told that from next year, the reporting will include CEOs as well. As for what about women working part-time, if they're going to care for their children at home, is that suddenly added into the average? Well, no, they convert that part-time salary into what it would be if you did work full-time. Not everyone thinks this is an accurate representation. This is what we heard from the National Senator, Matt Canavan. It might be useless for its own objectives and purposes, but I worry it's actually counterproductive to our society. These type of reports are becoming annual Andrew Tate recruitment drives. All they do is, is, is spread division and resentment in our community. Uh, people, young men in particular, feel like they are now being discriminated against. OK, young men being discriminated against. Hot take there from Matt Cunningham. Cunningham. There's a lot happening. Uh, Matt Cunningham, Matt mm. Canavan. Um, <laughs> sorry, Matt, we'll be speaking to you soon about something very different. Uh, Trudy, there's a fair mm. bit happening there in Parliament today other than this gender pay gap report. Take us through that. Yeah, we're going to see from former Prime Minister Scott Morrison, Laura, finally giving his valedictory. It's been talked about for some time that he's leaving Parliament, but finally pulling up today, retiring from politics as he goes to move on to his post-political uh, career. He's delivering his valedictory, we believe, just after midday. But he's given a few interviews ahead of that, and it's interesting to see him point out that he'd like to be uh, along the same lines as Julia Gillard when she left Parliament and the fact that she didn't get involved in the day-to-day -day political debate and that she's broadly respected by both sides of politics, regardless of what you thought of her time as Prime Minister. I also wanted to bring you this update, though. The Trade Minister, Don Farrell, he won't be here in Canberra. That's because he's instead, at the moment, over in the UAE. He's been attending these trade talks over there in Abu Dhabi. He's met overnight... For, with his uh, Chinese commerce counterpart. Now, they've spoken about a few really interesting things here. One, for the first time, uh, they were able to speak about this issue of Dr Yang Hen-jun, the first time an Australian minister's brought up that case after he was being given a suspended death sentence, and also a breakthrough, hopeful, uh, within the next month when it comes to those wine tariffs, Laura. I'm told that uh, the wine review that China's conducting is due to end by the end of March, and the government is hoping that... By then, we will see that $1 billion worth of tariffs lifted for our Australian wine exporters. OK, that is good news. Trudy, thank you. Well, just on the gender pay gap issue, this is what I wanted to show you. Sky News, the only commercial television broadcaster to have closed the gender pay gap among staff. Channel 9, 13.4% base pay. That's a 
10.1% total gender pay gap. Channel 7 at 13.8%. Channel 10, a 5.5% gender pay gap. And at Sky News, you can see it is on par or just less. Minus 1.1%. So perhaps we've just tipped over the balance there. But as you can see, Sky News doing pretty well. The only commercial broadcaster to have closed the gender pay gap among staff.